Hey guys, welcome back to Josh No Code. Today we're talking about how to integrate Facebook lead ads and HubSpot. We're gonna be creating a zap that takes our Facebook leads and creates new contact records in HubSpot. Uh, it's gonna be pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, there's two items to it. We're gonna be talking about how to set up the Facebook lead ads trigger and then setting up the action uh, in HubSpot, which is basically just mapping some data over from the Facebook lead ads trigger. Uh, there's two bonus items today. There's um, one field that needs to be kind of parsed out in Facebook in order for it to synchronize into two fields into HubSpot. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to do that. Uh, the second one is just you know how to do this with Instagram lead ads. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. The process, pretty, pretty much the same thing. But might as well just show it. Kill two birds in one stone, um, and that's basically it. Hey guys, welcome back. So before we could create our uh, trigger, uh, we're, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a form on the Facebook Business Manager website. This is going to be the form that's going to be attached to your ads and uh it's basically going to be a form that your leads you know fill out and leave their contact information um so yeah we're going to need to do that in order to get here we're to to this page and this is showing all the forms i previously created for our ads um you go to the left here and you scroll to all tools scroll down to uh instant forms under advertise and you're gonna to wanna to select that. So that brings us here. We're gonna go ahead and click on the create form button. This is a new form. Uh, I'm just gonna title this, you know, test form one, two, three. Um, and then we're going to um, now add some information about this form. Um, so you're gonna to have to add a background image. Uh, Facebook requires you to do that. So I'm just gonna click this you know, nice, pretty zap your picture to add that there. Nothing that great. Um, and then you're gonna add a headline. Again, this is for test purposes. So I'm just gonna call this test, test form, you know, one, two, three, something like that. Um, and then additional details. This is a test form. Now we're gonna add some questions. Um, as a default, basically Facebook gives you the email and full name fields, which is pretty nice. And that's actually what we need, but we'll add um, also phone number here and you could add additional information such as street address, city, state, province, um, country, um, some user information, you could add demographic information, work information. And um, it also gives you the ability to create, you know, custom questions for the form, uh, which is also pretty nice too. You could just add a question here. You could add a multiple choice, add a short answer conditional, uh, or an appointment request, so things like that. And again, all of this that you add here, you, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you how you could get all that information um, out of Facebook and to other sources. But if you could do it with email, you could do it with full name and phone number, you could do it with everything else. So a uh, few fields you need to be able to complete here in order to get started. So first off, Facebook requires you to add a link to your privacy policy. So I'm just gonna add a link to a privacy policy for, for our website, um, just for example purposes. So add that in. Um, now we're gonna have to add um, the next thing we're going to need to add is a uh, completion step. So when someone fills out your form, they could either view your website or there could be a prompt to call the business or download something. So we're just gonna have um, view website as our call to action. Um, and you can see the button is right here at the end. Um, to do that. So I am just going to delete this part of the URL and um, scroll down and let's see if it lets us publish this form. Oh, okay, so one little thing is missing. Uh, this is very important. You have to basically let people know how you're gonna be using their data. So um, I'm just gonna say here, we will use your data to contact you about our offer that's it let's see okay so it allowed us to publish this uh test form we have it here now let's see if we can find it into in zap here 
So I'm just gonna search for the Facebook uh, lead ads trigger right here. Uh, the event pop, um, shows up, new lead triggers when a new lead is created. And let's see if, if it could find the form we just created. Okay, so the first time it didn't work out, I got a little nervous there, just kidding. Uh, but the second time I ran it, it looks like it found the, the test submission, uh, which is great. So um, yeah, we have all the information about uh, it from the fields in the form, which is great. So I'm just going to uh, you know load more, see if I can find the most recent one that was submitted. Um, and let's see here. Um, I believe this is all from other forms. So let me just see really quick if it po populated the right. Okay, so very important here. You need to be able to select the form um, and uh, it's not populating. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna have to refresh the fields to see if it comes through. If the test form one, two, three comes through. Uh, I'm not seeing it, so might have to, you know, kind of delete this this uh, step altogether. All right, let's just see if we could um, we could uh, do this again. From another zap really quick all right let's see if we can find our form All right, there it is. So test form one, two, three. We're going to see if it is, if it could find a submission. Uh, yeah, and so it found the test submission. You can see it has all the information we need. Form ID has the, um, you know, your form name, your email, your full, full name, phone number, um, all the things like that. So any fields you would add in the form and uh, data that's submitted, uh, in those fields would just populate right here, which is great, and that's exactly what we need. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our action, which is basically just to create a new contact in HubSpot. So I just selected the event being create contact, which uh, creates a contact in HubSpot. Um, and uh, yeah, let me get into our account here. And you're gonna now see a bunch of fields uh, for HubSpot contacts um, that's available for you to, you know, input some data in. So we're just gonna go um, to, let's just say first name. First name. Now we're gonna add some information, but we just ran into a little bit of a predicament here. You could see that the full name field um, has, like we, there's no, there's no first name field here for you to add that information, you just have a full name. And of course, back into the, the Facebook uh, lead form, we could just create a first name field, but um, here the default is full name. So what are we gonna do about that? Um, we are going to format this data in a, another step. This way we could just add it in here and it works seamlessly. So in order to do that, we're gonna add a format step. So format by Zapier. We're going to format a text. And what we're specifically gonna transform here is we are going to split the text. So we need to input some data here. Um, and what we're gonna input is we're gonna input this full name. And we are going to now to have to add a se uh, segment index to basically just like separate all the fields we want um, 
um, uh, yeah, so to be able to separate that. So I would just put it into all uh, as line items. And let's see if we could separate all this into line items. I know this is a very long name, but our goal is obviously just to get, you know, uh, a few things in there. So let's just test this out. And you can see that we got an output. Um, this, so basically just line one would probably be like your first name. Line two would be your last name. But, you know, this gives us a bunch of information we could use. And we'll just go into our action step in HubSpot. And now we're just going to search again for the fir first name. And we're going to go to that format step. And, um, ah, I realized another issue. So we shouldn't have done it in a line item. We should have actually done the other option. So I'll just do that really quick. Fix that here. Uh, split text and do into as separate fields. That's what we should have done. Okay, so retest this action. Good, okay, so we got a bunch of items. Um, now let's go and set up our action. Again, go back to first name. And we are, we could see that we have uh, a bunch of options. So again, output one would probably be like your first name, output two would be like your last name. So we'll just add output one test. And now we're gonna go back to last name, to the last name field. And we're gonna just add um, that second output, which is lead. Okay, so last name lead. So we got the first name, the last name in there. Then we're gonna search for the phone number field. Um, so contact information, phone number. And uh, this one, we can just go right into to Facebook and we'll just add this information just for example purposes. And um, last but not least, the email. So searching that. And let's try to find it. Contact information email. So this is what we need. So we'll just add the email in here. And that's basically it. That's what we need. And uh, yeah. You could also do some other cool things here. They have life cycle stage, which is which is nice. Um, just for example purposes, we'll just set that to lead just to kind of show you what we could do there. But these are all the fields you have in HubSpot and uh, you could just map data as you like. You could create new fields in HubSpot and you could create those fields in Facebook form and you could kind of just tie things together. Um, but yeah, we have basically what we need right now. So we're going to just click continue and we're going to test action. So if this works, a new contact should be created in our Facebook, in our uh, HubSpot CRM. Okay, so it looks like a contact was sent to HubSpot two seconds ago. We are going to go over to HubSpot and we could see that um, the information filled out. Um, we have our name, email, uh, phone number, things like that. Let's just see if the first and first name and last name uh, filled out correctly. So let's see. Um, we're just gonna go to <clears throat> we're gonna go to actions, edit columns, first name. Then we'll add our last name in here. And you could see that the test and lead populated correctly into our fields. All right, guys. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how can we do the same exact thing, but with Instagram um, and set up, you know, an Instagram lead ads as our trigger here. So I'm just going to search that right here and add that app. So Instagram lead ads, this is an instant trigger. And basically it's going to be the same exact thing as the Facebook lead ads trigger as well it's a new lead it triggers when a new lead is created and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just see if we could find the form that we previously created because it's not um, you know uh, exclusive just to Instagram or Facebook the forms we could create um, a form could be used for both platforms so let's just see if we could find it uh, we load it up and we see our test form one two three uh, loads up here and we'll just go ahead and we'll test that out and you can see now 
that the uh, the data that we previously had on the the, the, for, the example form submission for the Facebook lead ads is exactly the same. So um, this is how we would basically just do it with uh, Instagram. And that is basically it for today. Um, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue seeing uh, more content and more videos. And if you have any ideas as far as um, any future content, just drop it in the comments and we'll, we'll get to work on it. Um, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you in the next video.